Salem. Um, this is our debate, is beauty just skin deep, uh, here in the Space NK flagship store in Westbourne Grove. My name is Anna Richardson, I'm a Channel 4 presenter um, and erstwhile immersive guinea pig on the beauty series uh, How Not to Get Old, where I tried very, very painful cosmetic procedures in the pursuit of what really works so that you guys don't have to. Uh, let me tell you, um, yeah, I'm no stranger to a needle. A little bit like my esteemed guests uh, on the panel this evening. We have, of course, the very well-known journalist Kate Spice, a lifestyle journalist, Sunday Times journalist and broadcaster in your own right. You may well have seen Kate doing various documentaries on the pursuit of beauty uh, and, of course, her own feature documentary, Mission to Lars. Um, and we also have, and I've got to check this, Liz Edlick. I've just uh, changed the details around this. Liz <laughs> is a former investment banker and founder of Radical Skin Care, uh, and she is also, more importantly, a passionate philanthropist. So, Paxman-style debate <laughs> around <laughs> beauty and cosmetics. Just to give you a little bit of history about makeup and cosmetics, it's actually uh, been around mankind for 6,000 years and can be evidenced in almost every society on Earth. Uh, it is also mentioned in the Bible. So this is certainly nothing new. So with that in mind, ladies, what is the enduring appeal of makeup for women and cosmetics? Kate, I can see that you're already bursting with opinion on this one. I think there's two ways of looking at it. First of all, I think makeup is very tribal. And when we um, go, oh, have I put too much makeup on or have I not got enough on? We kind of forget that, like you were saying, makeup's been around for thousands and thousands of years and in every culture that you can look at. Um, and makeup is very tribal, and it's not just about us being vain and, and obsessing about ourselves. It's about becoming part of a, of a tribe that we want to be considered part of. So you look at, I mean, there's probably not many candidates in this room that I can see, but you, know, you go to Newcastle on a Saturday night and check out what kind of makeup those girls are wearing, like the heaviest sort of pancake makeup, big thick eyebrows, the, or, or let's say Liverpool with the scouse brow, which they will spend hours building up to look perfect. And, and that is their look. And we as outsiders, not probably being Liverpool Saturday night type, Anybody here from the... <laughs> yeah, just to check. <laughs> and if you are, you've moved and you're in Westbourne Grove now, you're part of another <laughs> tribe, and that's why we all look kind of similar, actually, a lot of us. But like, you've, got, you've got quite a heavy makeup on. You look absolutely... <laughs> no, but, but you look absolutely amazing. I'm immediately drawn to you. It looks very, very attractive, but it's a very different look. It's a very, um, it's a very strong makeup look, and it's a lot of, you know, shading, whatever... So, yeah. <laughs> like, everybody have a look at her. I mean, she looks absolutely <laughs> wicked. But that's, you know, that's that's your look. And, and there are other women out there who can pull that look and look amazing. And then there's people like me who are kind of a little bit embarrassed, but actually spend quite a long time trying to get a sort of unified, you know, nice, calm complexion that isn't livid red around the mouth because I'm drinking too much or <laughs> bright red around the eyes because I'm having to sleep. Anyway, where, where I was rambling a bit, but I think, you know, it's not so much about makeup per se. It's like, what, what, what does makeup say about ourselves? It, it, we use it to express ourselves. And I think there can, it can look a bit tragic and a bit sad sometimes. But mostly, it is part of your identity, and for that reason, it should be celebrated. But I, but I think when it does look tra tragic and sad is when people truly use it like a heavy, heavy mask. And, they, and their features have become lost behind that makeup. And then I think it is a bit emblematic of something that's perhaps slightly, slightly wrong. But mostly it should be celebrated as just another tool in the female arsenal for expressing themselves. Liz, what do you think? The enduring appeal of makeup for all of us. If anybody disagrees with me, feel free to shout at me later. <laughs> <laughs> when it's your turn to shout. <laughs> for me, I think makeup is um, it's just a step. It's like the muscle that we use that shows that we're actually loving ourselves for a moment, yeah. taking care of ourselves. And when we take the time to take care of ourselves, that can help to translate into other areas of our life. So it's just those simple moments where we say, you know what, I'm going to just take a second um, to have a quiet moment with myself, or I'm actually in the car doing my mascara, whatever it is, as we're so multitasking, trying to be so many places and do so many things. But it is an actual assertion, a self-affirmation of, 
I'm taking care of me, and I want to look and feel my best and whatever that is. And there's different expressions and different fashions. And makeup, I've seen, I'm not a heavy makeup wearer, and I'm 50, and so then the older I'm getting, I know that it's much more youthful not to wear a lot of makeup. Um, but by the same token, I notice, you know, years ago, I didn't see the big, big, bright purple and bright green and bright, you know, so it's really also become very fashion-oriented makeup and, and maybe tribal as well. So tribal and then it moves with fashion and moves with culture and, and community. But I do think it is a muscle and it's an, it, it's an affirmation that I want to look and feel my best and I do want to express myself. And I was sharing with some people today at Space and K that it was also a bit of freedom and fun and joy and lightness. Is it about being accepted as well, do you think? Because, I mean, how many, we're in the wrong store, I know, but is there anybody here that hasn't got makeup on? Apart from the men. <laughs> bit of guy liner is really have. sexy. There is a bit of guy liner going on there, definitely. <laughs> any lady that hasn't got any makeup on? No, I mean, yes. Everybody. So there's something about social acceptability as well, I think, that in terms of women, that you know, we, we want to be a part of something. But I think sometimes you can feel very confident and go out with a bare face and be like, you know what, I don't care. I think if you have to wear makeup every day and you're, you can't go out with a true bare face, then maybe you do need to look at your relationship with makeup. You, you should be able to go out for a pint of milk without putting on a full eyebrow and... I'll, I will come back to that later. But, I've, I've, got, I've got a girlfriend who wears um, a lot of makeup. And actually, without her makeup, she, her, I've, I realise I do not see anything of her actual beauty because she spends so much time doing what she perceives to enhance her best bits or this, that and the other. But actually, underneath the makeup, she, is, she looks more beautiful and more young. So I think there is sometimes a relationship with makeup that can be a bit distorted. Now, this is very interesting, because if, if there is one thing that is sure to you know, guarantee a bit of an argument, I think, between girlfriends and, and, and women, it is about other people's, or their makeup. You know, woe betide, you criticise another woman's makeup, and particularly as we get older as well, the idea of looking younger, the idea of how much makeup we should be using. Is it a feminist issue? Because actually makeup, you could argue, A, it's controversial for women and it's trivial. So is it a feminist issue? Do you think that we focus too much on how we look? Well, <laughs> I think it can steal our life, to be honest. Uh, uh, in that I know that I've been going through Space and Cave for the last week and actually being on the floor with the beautiful beauty advisors and the customers coming in. And many of them had skin conditions. One woman had rosacea, a beautiful woman, 50, 52 years old maybe. And she sat in the chair and she said, you know, this has been such a painful issue for me that if my rosacea is really bad one day, I cancel everything and don't go out of the house. And I said, I mean, that is part of the joy of creating radical skincare, that I actually was able to give people radical freedom. Freedom from having to wear the makeup and being able to have clean, clear skin and know that when they wake up in the morning, there's going to be at least almost that certainty. But because to hear her feeling that much pain or a young girl came in with very bad acne, to know that you have something that can help to heal that so that they have the self-confidence and to, to think that, if you think about our life is a series of moments and every single moment we have is part of that pearl necklace, if you think of it that way. So the more beautiful moments we have, the longer our beautiful, lustrous necklace. And in fact, the fact that we would let a day go by, moments, a week, where we're not expressing ourselves and not engaging with the people we love because we feel ashamed, embarrassed because of our skin or what have you, or we're not perfect not perfect that week. Um, that really steals our joy and that inner thing, that inner sparkle that radiates the real beauty that comes from within. So you think that actually it's about confidence? I do. And that in terms of, you know, being an independent woman, a very successful woman, a feminist if you like, that actually, uh, yes it might be controversial, but at the end of the day, it's about freedom and confidence, and it's a woman's choice to wear makeup. It's a woman's choice. I, frankly, before these questions, never thought about it. Well, I never it? actually thought about, do I wear my makeup in the morning? I literally, I get up, and I just want to look and feel my best. And if I was 
lucky enough to run again, up against a makeup artist that would say, hey, did you ever try this color? It's like, that's fun, that's new, let me try it. It's great. But are you, are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for other women? Or are you doing it to look attractive to men? I'm the doing last one's I'm doing it. I'm doing it for all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that honest? Of course I do it for myself. I look in the mirror and say, like, okay, I feel good. Are you doing it for other women as well? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I'm just doing it so I feel good because it's, it's easier. It's an easier moment just to feel good. But then again, I'm, I'm also feel pre pretty comfortable not wearing any makeup. So I can go either way. But I mean, if I do go to a, a black tie or tonight, I have on makeup. So I don't, I don't consider it a feminist issue to me. What do you think? I think the argument in feminism is endlessly shifting. And um, when I was sort of coming of age in the late 80s, uh, lipstick feminism was just sort of coming into sort of trend, if you like. And um, there had been, you know, 70s feminism was about burning bras and not wearing makeup. Um, well, I think we've all understood that we need bras, especially if you're running for a bus. Um, and, and that actually, you know, that kind of radical aspect of 70s feminism was to make us think and make us address the fact, well, why do we make, wear makeup? I know we're not, all, not all of us are like heavy duty feminists in here. We, we don't spend our whole life going, why am I doing that? Am I a victim of the patriarchy? But, um, I think, you know, you do need to look at your relationship with makeup. You know, why am I doing it? Am I enhancing what I've got and feeling good about it? Am I disguising what I did last night and getting away with it? You know, <laughs> or, or am I doing it because I feel I need to look a certain way? I mean, there was a trend a few years ago for very glossy, nude lip, kind of like that. And, um, and I think a lot of feminists were like, these are vagina lips, these are porno lips. You know, these are lips that le men look at them. I'm so happy I live in Malibu. <laughs> I know. And <laughs> so happy. This is new okay, to me. I never got that. Okay? I never got that. You asked class. me the, okay, about the F word. You asked me about the F word. And feminism, nothing if it's not ugly. And that is what, that's what everyone talked about. So you have to look at it. Like, sometimes makeup is, it, it, it does come from a, not a particularly female friendly place. Um, we don't need to really worry about that. I mean, if, if our makeup, the way we wear our makeup it also affects the way we behave and we are putting makeup on and copying some porn star and trotting off to work like that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's not a great way to use makeup. So it can, it can be, it can, it's not that extreme. You do see girls trotting around like that with their trout well, pouts. Course, and you, you, you do, but you, I mean, we can go to extreme. They're not in here. Anyway. This is a tasteful crowd. But you know. <laughs> you I say think. that, Kate. You say <laughs> that. I've had a good look at it, to be honest. <laughs> but I wanted to, there was something I was thinking about makeup. And if you say it's not a friendly, a female friendly place, I don't know because. I feminism. Think feminism friendly, we were talking about. Okay. Because I think that there have been many times where I might be with a girlfriend. And I look at her, and she's not feeling so good. And we might just go in the bedroom. Come here, come here. Let yeah, me yeah, 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 yeah. And there's something that's it's a little it lifts you up. Yeah, a little yes. loving so about it. So there's a bit it. of sisterhood about it as I, well. It's kind I of you know so. wanting to nurture your friend. I think so. Just out of interest, then, put your hand up, ladies. If you do your makeup every day for yourself, i.e., because you want to look good, do you hands up if anybody does it? Secretly, because you want other women to admire you as well and go, God, you look great today. <laughs> oh, only a couple. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I would. I, you know, I would much rather people said to me, you look really good, than just do it for me, because I know I, I don't. So it would be good to, you know, to hear that from people. But also, how many of you, put your hands up, do it for your partner or to feel attractive to other people? Yeah, again, only, only a few people. I think it's quite yeah. rarely done for men, actually, because men, famously, a lot of men... Don't really like women in makeup, do they? Now that isn't it in boys. Well, yeah, I know we're going. Sl there was a program on last night called Meeting the Russians. Yes. And there was a, I, I've only seen this program once, but there was a woman there who said that she did her makeup. She would not go out until she had a full armor of makeup, and she did it purely so that her husband wouldn't look at any other women. When they were Interesting. Around. But those are Russian women who yeah. um, their their culture, and I think they'd be very honest and agree with me that. Their culture is geared much more to pleasing men and seeing ma making a good marriage as more of a business proposition. I think we live in very, very different times. In the, we, we live in a very different time in this in this country. I, I think that we have moved on a bit, and we can kind of 
keep our men on strengths other than just but how equally, great we look in miniskirts. That is interesting, though, that there are cultural responses as well to make it. As British boys, do, I won't include you. I can see you're batting for the other team, clearly. <laughs> but, <laughs> as, sorry. Terrible. How can, can you tell? tell? How can I tell? How can you as, tell? <laughs> as the straight men in here, put your hands Ooh. up. Straight boys. <laughs> do, you, do you prefer women? In makeup, quite a lot of makeup, or do you prefer it just completely own, own natural? Less. Okay. And any other chat want to add to that? Do you prefer women with a lot of makeup or less? Just right, the balance. Yeah. There are moments. They don't like it when you look really, really rough. So it's good to disguise that and look, and look kind of fresh. Sometimes they're just going to put up with you looking rough. Um, but equally, if it's really, really loads done, then I think that scares a lot of men. Yes. But you know... I think the main thing for men is if it inhibits a woman from being free, then you don't want it. So if, if you want to go and run in the sea together naked, if she's got a wife, put makeup on. Yeah. Then you're like, if you want to be spontaneous... <laughs> that is boring. I'm on now. I'm on now. Inhibiting spontaneity. Exactly. That's right. If she wants to do it one day, then, you know, you're a um, You know there's a range of makeup now, specifically for wearing secretly in bed. No. Yeah. And I have, I have been in situations with men who don't make me feel very comfortable, which is quite key, where I'm like, oh, my God, have I got any concealer? You know, and it's bedtime, but you're kind of talking, trying to cover up the bags on your eyes and pitching your cheeks and biting your lips and all this kind of thing because you don't feel confident enough that they're just into you for who you are. You know, that's when you probably need to not be... You probably need to find another man. Not be putting, <laughs> not be putting on the makeup. The makeup specifically designed not to come off on the pillow, so the man never knows you're wearing any. You've got the man right here. Here's our, our, our perfect chat. <laughs> no, no, this is a whole different show. This is a whole different show now. Okay, has anybody heard of lipstick economics? Uh, well, I, interesting. I hadn't actually heard about this earlier on, but this is the idea that in times of austerity, in times of financial crisis, that actually women buy more makeup. Why do you think that is, Liz? Well, in, in some cases, it's the one thing they can control. I mean, if you think about it, when you're feeling out of control or you're feeling insecure, or you feel like, okay, every day is a, you know, bad news, your husband or your boyfriend or is coming home and saying, okay, we've got to cut back or this is a problem or no, no vacation or this and that. It's a way to at least, again, use that muscle, that muscle to say, I'm going to take care of me today. Or I can do one little thing that I can control. That it's, makes me feel yeah, good. Yeah, that makes me feel good. Okay. Especially if every day I'm feeling like, again, there's another, you know, it's just like more depressing news upon more depressing news, people being laid off, etc. girlfriends losing, you know, whatever it is. It's like, it's one little thing I can get lost for a second in does a light blue look better or a plum? I can get lost, I can do something and actually own it and control that. Do you think it's also, Kate, because it, it's kind of, you know, relatively affordable as well just to buy a new nail varnish? Well, I think the luxury houses have changed a lot in um, recent years. You know, Louis Vuitton just used to make beautiful, beautiful luggage for incredibly rich people, and now they make all sorts of things, um, many, many of which will be affordable to people like you and me. Mm. Uh, and I think a lot of the luxury brands have makeup lines because that is your... I mean, sunglasses are two, three hundred pounds from a luxury brand. Your entry level with a luxury brand is a lipstick. You know, you can own a bit of that beautiful design. It's probably got a heavy case. And, you know, I think there's a theory that women have um, lipsticks that they take out and they apply in public in, in the loo or at the table. Or, and then they have other kind of more cheaper brands that aren't so beautiful, so don't feel so nice in the hand or whatever that they use in the bathroom at home. But can't you put those brands in that really beautiful case? Well, with the lipstick, it's quite complicated. You don't have to have a. She's tried. Have to have an engineering degree or something. Um, but I think um, we do like buying into luxury products. They do make us feel good about ourselves. Um, and also, on a, I'm not sure I particularly agree with the whole lipstick economics thing because um, it was it was first um, brought to light by Leonard Lauder, mm. who's got a huge lipstick company. He's got, he may have some vested interest in that. Um, <laughs> But I think also lipstick is amazing because you can, you can look at your wardrobe and go, God, I need new jeans, I need to do this, oh, my look is dead. But actually, you find the right lipstick, you have the right conversation with somewhere like Space NK, you find a lipstick, that you, a colour you've never thought of wearing, and suddenly you're like, bada bing, you know, I can go back to my wardrobe now and rethink everything. 
And that is a miracle for like what? I don't know, 15, 20 quid. That is a genuine miracle if you've got the balls to do it. It's, it's interesting because, yes, Leonard Lauder did um, sort of coin the phrase and a, a journalist said to him recently, lipstick economics is it's dead, it's absolute rubbish because it's been proven that actually lipstick sales are down given that we are now in an age of austerity and we're really struggling. Lipstick sales have gone down. He went, yeah, because it's all about nail varnish now. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Apparently, we're now buying loads and loads of really bright nail varnish to try and cheer ourselves up. So, yeah, clearly there is some correlation. I mean, there is, there is something really, with, with makeup, there is something really playful and fun about it. And we shouldn't be, you know, beating ourselves up like, oh, it's expensive, we're wasting money, or we should be spending money on something more important. Or, oh, you know, is, is it a feminist issue? Is it something other? It's, it's like so playful and colourful. It's like being a child and playing with crayons and. And just, you know, I come into places like this and I'm rubbish at putting on makeup, but you're like putting things up, you love to smell things. Mm. It's a very sensory experience, even though smell makes no difference to anything about any cosmetic. Um, it's probably, in fact, a negative when it comes to skin sensitivity or whatnot, but we love the smell. It's the first thing everybody does. They're given anything, cosmetics or, or beauty products, like, what does it smell like? You know, That's it's such a wonderful with, sensory with luxury, escape, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think it also reminds us of maybe being when we were young. And it doesn't make you fat, which is good. <laughs> it's like buying shoes, isn't it? You don't have to worry about what size you are. It'll give you a lift. It doesn't matter what size you are. It's kind of, you know, but it'll make you feel like life's a little bit better. Actually, smell, though, is important in that area because of the limbic system. And there's been so much research. I mean, even when we chose the scents in our cream, we literally researched what it is that gives you a sense of well-being and happiness. And that's tangerine. No. And uh, vanilla is closest to baby breast milk and gives people a sense of security. Oh, you I wish you had told me that. Me that yeah. Yeah. So I like rose. Orange vanilla, yeah. you know, candles. And so literally one of the things that people say when they, because you're right, they come and the first thing they do is they look at it, they feel it, and then they smell it. Yeah. And when you smell something that makes you feel like, it's actually, we, we say, God, well, you know, if I'm going to put that in the morning and at night, at least twice a day, I get to smell something that makes me feel better. Does everybody do that? Yeah. Girl, that's really weird. I, didn't, I honestly didn't think about that. We do, don't we? And then we go, yeah, yeah, that smells really, really good. And, it, and it's if sort it of reminiscent. It's you don't game buy over. it. Yeah. So it's really, smell is so important. To food, you have a cold. You smell, the, if you can't smell the food, you're not hungry. So that's why, that's such a, that sensory aspect of life is really important and very, we were talking uh, earlier on, just sort of backstage, about whether or not makeup can get you what you want, which I thought was really interesting. And Liz, you have quite a lot to say about this. That actually, absolutely, it puts you in the competitive arena. So just sort of fill us in a little bit more about that. I probably wouldn't narrow it down just to makeup. I would just say self-care. So whether it's skincare, because you had pointed out earlier, if you don't start with skin that you feel really great about, um, then you're trying to cover it up and fix something with makeup. Makeup hopefully will enhance what you've, what you've got and what you've created. Your skin is your largest organ, so being taken care of that. But if you look at the statistics, um, you look at you know, attractive people, um, get more jobs, get <coughs> yes to the sales more often, uh, get, you know, they're just, they are, they attract people more. They attract the yes more than they do than others. Therefore, any way that we can narrow the gap, of course, um, and whether that's in the way we dress, in the way in our skin, in our makeup, or what have you, so that we feel better, because there is so much to confidence, the way someone sits, the way someone speaks, their whole persona, and that has much to do with how they're feeling inside. So you are narrowing the gap, I believe, and statistically as to how much mileage and how many yeses you're going to get, and you know, hopefully a success in getting what you want, if that's what would define success. But you, what, what you're talking about there is whether beauty can help you get what you want. And yeah, there is just com it completely undeniable um, weight of evidence, the fact that beautiful people get more and, you know, tall men get paid more money and, and mm -hmm. being attractive gives you endless benefits in life. However, being attractive and stupid <laughs> it's only going to get you so far, mm -hmm. isn't it? And, and, you know, we've got the Nobel Prize this week and... Um, None of those people are particularly attractive, but they're geniuses at other things. And I think you can, I think women sometimes put too much weight on how they look and they will spend, I'm as guilty as anybody, and they will spend a lot of energy on looking good when actually they could put some energy into some other, acquiring mm. some other attributes, personal attributes, um, 
that aren't just about using cosmetics and makeup and whatnot. They're oh, kind of like sure. getting exams, getting the right job, mixing with the right people or whatever. So um, I don't think you can put, it's not all about beauty. It's a, we're, we're made up. We're made up. If you want to talk about it in economic terms, erotic capital, as some people call it, um, is only one aspect of your, you know, your 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 but the things you have to use in life. You know, you've got your the, the way you look. You've also got the people you know. You've got your intellectual skills. You've got your charm. You've got so many other things. It's not. I mean, how many people know beautiful people? who might wear the most beautiful makeup, but who are assholes, and you don't want to be around them. Yeah. yeah. You know? You don't want to be around them. So it's not all about beauty. It's, it's one asset. Absolutely. Just in terms of the show that um, I've just finished doing called How Not To Get Old, uh, in case you want to know, people respond. They don't respond to makeup. They don't necessarily respond to your hair. They respond instantly to your skin, weirdly. And so if you have very good skin, and both of these women, you have... A, excellent skin in fact it was commented on earlier on that uh, by the lovely is roger isn't it yeah roger said amazing skin on on those women that's the first thing people will see on your face is the skin um i know we are in space mk and there are products available for those kind of things uh, but yeah it's um it is it is worth thinking about that uh, and now uh, to the burning question before i throw it out to the floor in case you've got anything that you, that, that you want to ask um would you ever leave the house and go to a social occasion, I can't believe I'm saying this, with no makeup on. <laughs> Would you, Liz? Social occasion, I guess you'd have to define that. Would you go, would you go to a public event with no, no makeup on? No, I'd probably wear some mascara or something, something just to make me look awake. <laughs> you know, I don't have much in the eyelash range, so I probably would try to enhance whatever features I had. So when, when would you leave the house with absolutely no makeup? Oh, I, all the time. Okay. I, I leave the house all the time without makeup. I work out without makeup. I go running. I go to the office. I mean, I don't know. I think it's just so much about the joy that you can bring. And sometimes we can get so into ourselves, and that's even limiting. When I'm so worried about, is my makeup okay, like you were saying, you know, it's like it's bondage. You know, if you're sitting there with a guy and you're worried if your concealer's right, you're in bondage. Not in a good way. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at 50 shades of radical right now. It's like, yeah. I don't know. We're taking the word radical to a whole new level. But no, I'm still in Malibu. I'm still in Malibu. Go home, yeah. go home, Dorothy. I'm in bondage now. Yeah. We're not London. talking about the nude lip again. It's no, all right. No, no, no. We're, we're good. good. Okay, we're fine. Good. I'm good. But truly, you know, we, we can be in a sense of like when you're so self concerned, and that almost, again, steals that sense of freedom, confidence, life, like you were saying. Spontaneity. Spontaneity. Yeah. When we can just be. That's electric. I mean, Mike, we were just talking about, you know, just real, like how we're defined as attractive, whether it's thin and blonde and tall and cut. And there's every, you know, generation or decade, there's a different definition of mm. beautiful. They, mm. They've profiled so many different looks. But I know one of my best girlfriends is about 5'4", a little fluffy. And she just, you know, she's 62. She's got twins. And she just comes into a room and she's electric. Everyone wants to be around yeah, her. Yeah. And if she would not call her the stereotype. So beauty is so much more than skin deep. And it's just how you radiate and what you share. So the more freedom we can give one another just to be, I think the more that we radiate and we all capitalize off, off of it. I mean, it's a sisterhood that way. Radiate <laughs> away. Are there any <laughs> questions from the floor? Give me your energy. Anything that you, you want to know, anybody? Come on! <laughs> no, no questions at all. You're all just gagging at the bit to shop, basically. Is that get, what it is? <laughs> get back to the champagne. <laughs> Juliet Kingsman, yes. So you're talking about beauty being, you know, skin being the most important thing in the different way, but you're not talking about diet or sleep or the other factors. And I, it's interesting to hear people talk about skin. I used to have a terrible, terrible skin. I had to take medication for it. You know, and yeah, I find that, you know, if you pile it all on, it, it's, it's, it's really, there's so many other factors. Yeah, sleep. God, sleep is amazing for skin. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if only you, know. you could buy eight hours sleep in here. Can you sort that out, Annabelle? Would be great. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Lifestyle obviously plays a you know, massive factor. But I, I just found it really interesting that all the scientists and doctors that I was speaking to were saying, look, you know, forget your hair. 
and forget what makeup you put on and cosmetic procedures. It is all about your skin, and that is the indicator of youth as well. So youth and beauty is clear, plump skin. It's extraordinary. Water and sleep. Like you said, sleep, if we could bottle it, we would all be, be rich. If we get sleep and we drink lots of water, it's one of the keys. You know, a lot of us are very dehydrated and mm. don't even know it. If, we, if you up your water take, you lose weight, and you, you plump your skin up, and you're also cleansing your body, it's so but amazing. But we can't all be perfect all the time, constantly be drinking glasses of water and drinking the right things. And sometimes we're modern women, and we do what the fuck we want, and that's not always a good, always a good thing. And the great thing is, we have products. The first one I came across when I was 18, and I started to be aware of the effects of a late night was Beauty Flash Balm by Clarence, which oh, yeah, feels really yeah. antiquated now, like it should be in a museum. But I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I look like I've had a few extra hours of sleep. And I think we do use cosmetics quite a lot to um, just get away with it. Mm. You know, we might have crap skin, we might be this, might be that, but we can go and we can, okay, drop a little bit of money, but we can, that Becca, Becca, illuminating the foundation. I discovered that in Australia about three really? years ago. I was like, oh my God, another four hours sleep just went on my face. And I love that fact that we can cheat, yeah. the, cheat the world in a way that men, being a bit grisly, can't. Yeah. Anyway. I also think because it's not skin deep, if you go out and have a fantastic night, you've got spring in your step, and that makes you look better. And also, no, day-old so makeup is so cool. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's walking down, the, walking down the street, it's clearly morning, you're clearly wearing last night's clothes, you've got last night's makeup, dirty great grin, that is a good look. If I see, if I see someone like that, I get jealous. I think, oh, I wish I could do that. I want to do what she's doing. Well, no, she's it's, it's a bit, got a great makeup artist. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like what Liz was saying as well, isn't it? That, you know, of course, it's not necessarily about how you look, it's, it's your personality, it's the energy that you radiate is, is truly beautiful, and you were just referring to your friend. Lady at the back. Uh, totally. Yeah. I mean, that goes back Tribal. full circle to what we were saying right at the beginning about everybody has, a, you know, it, it, it's part of human nature, isn't it, to want to be accepted. So, uh, yes, you know, if she's influenced by the only way is Essex and her peers, then she's going to want to emulate what's going on. Otherwise, you're an outsider and nobody wants to be an outsider. She's Unless you're quite... really lazy like I am. The fact <laughs> that I'd have to sit there and get all those little eyelashes put on, I just would never have the tolerance for but it. But she's probably quite young as well. Mm. And I think when you're young, you do experiment with makeup. And, I mean, I think about how mm. I used to put makeup on. And I was like, wow. But you can get away with it when you're young. Yeah. It's pretty scary as well, isn't it? Yeah. It is pretty scary, but then if you start going, oh, I don't like the way they look, you start to sound like an old bag. <laughs> like, just let them, let them do it, as long as they're taking their exams and going to college and yeah. doing, the, doing the right things. You know, who, it's, it's all right to look like Amy Childs for a while. <laughs> <laughs> just don't keep there. it up all your life. <laughs> Any other questions at all? No? Okay, well, thank you very much to Kate. Thank you very much to fun. Liz. Thank you. you, did it? you that, that, that was a good laugh. Thank you, fun. everybody, for coming. I have something very exciting to tell you from um, our director uh, of Space NK here this evening. Apparently, if you spend over fifty pounds, <laughs> you will get. You'll be beautiful. Yes. <laughs> at the end. You will get uh, a free. I want to say goodie bag, but that's that's not yeah, right, is it? No, it's, it's kind of. Bag. A sort of lucky dick bag, bag. I kept saying lucky dick bag, which I know is. I'm so sorry. I said I wouldn't. Penis beaker. I did. Penis beaker. The sales in here just tripled. Exactly. Those sales went up. You'll get a lucky dick bag, which, by all accounts, Annabelle says contains amazing things. So uh, enjoy. And if there's any questions that you do want to ask privately, then just come and grab us afterwards. But thank you very much indeed. Enjoy shopping. Thank you.